uh, now we're going to have, uh, we've had a lot of quest questions about uh, Frank. And actually, <laughs> we've had a lot of questions about Frank. Frank, too. <laughs> Frank brings up a lot of questions. Evil, when you... evil has said, you know, they'll never get, really they'll never get me in. What, Frank? They'll never take me alive. They'll never take me in. Okay. <laughs> because I'm Frank not, has I'm been uh, here employee. since day one. We, we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Frank has been here since day one. And on the first show, actually, he was our guest by default because uh, we couldn't get anybody else <laughs> to be Just our musical minute. guest. Oh, is that better? So I interviewed him there and got a bit of the history, but we, our audience has grown quite a bit since then. So we decided to have Frank back again as our musical guest because he has a story <laughs> to tell and we want to delve into the But Frank, how about playing us a really happy sound right now? Don, what are, let's go over something right now. What are some happy songs that people could play to get their mood up right now? I know one. Like oh, Charlie yeah. Chaplin. Smile, though your heart is aching. Even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you get by. Through your fears and sorrow Smile maybe Tomorrow you'll see The sun come Shining through You Light up your heart With gladness Hide every trace Of sadness Although a tear May be ever so near That's the time you must keep on trying, smile, what's the use in crying, you'll find, your life can be worthwhile, St. Mary's, just smile, I believe that life would be like the St. Mary's symphony, if you just, everybody, you just, you Very good, Frank. I, I can hear the applause outside my window. Did you, did, <laughs> did you say Anyways, that was Charlie Chaplin? He wrote Charlie the Chaplin. he wrote the music, not the Charlie. Music. No, no, so that song wrote... has, that song is what 80, 90 years old. Yeah, I, 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 it's just a little bit younger than you are. Yeah, I mean, so you're thinking if he probably sang that, that song during the Depression, and yes. certainly. The world has gone through tougher times than the couple of weeks that we've had right now and maybe the few more weeks that we've got to go through. There are ways to make this work and uh, we yes. can all still have fun. And music is a great way of doing it, Frank. Charlie yeah. Chaplin actually wrote the lyrics to that tune. He wrote the lyrics? I thought he just wrote the music. No, he wrote the lyrics to it. And what happened basically was that most of his movies back in the day uh, before we were all born, most of the audience out there, uh, silent movies and all that, he always had a sad face. But apparently Charlie Chaplin was a very happy-go-lucky guy. He just had his, basically his Hollywood image was uh, like the sad kind of, you know, clown kind of guy. Uh, mm -hmm. So he wrote the lyrics to yep. uh, this yep. song, Smile, which I think is a great inspirational song for for anyone who, who's uh, who's facing any kind of troubles in their lives or, you know, obviously now the coronavirus is all over the world. So uh, smiling is free. See, you don't even have to have your own key. Or you Frank, can have Yes. Frank, where did this Frank St. Germain story start as far as music? Well, apparently I was born in Mount Sinai Hospital in Toronto, which I don't remember quite a bit. So my story starts there. But as we go along a little bit, uh, basically, I, I think I said on the first show, which was some years ago, uh, I, I wanted to be a hockey player. Back in the day when I was a young man, um, I was born in the 50s, by the way. Some people ask me what my age is. <laughs> I, I was born in the 50s. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but most young people like myself or young guys wanted to be hockey players. Uh, and in those days, you know, people like Tim Horton, a lot of young people don't realize that 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 uh, Tim Hortons, he was a hockey player. He was a defenseman, uh, and his defense a great partner, hockey player, great hockey player, and his defense partner was Alan Stanley. Now this is going a little trivia because I know John likes trivia, and some of the people out there may not know this, especially young people. But when they go to Tim 
importance, uh, they're really going to a, a place uh, where basically a hockey player, a defenseman for the Toronto Maple Leafs started it. Anyway, to get back to what I was saying, I wanted to be a little bit like Tim Horton, Bobby Orr, and all that. So I wanted to be a hockey player. I did not want to be a piano player by any stretch because I just thought piano playing was not for people like myself uh, who like to knock people out on the ice. Okay, hey. So how did you get started in music, Frank? Well, that's how I started in music. I didn't become a hockey player. So basically, I uh, I started uh, with this old hockey comp piano that... Uh, you know, I started playing. This is my first thing I ever played. Now, you're self-taught, correct? I am. You don't read music, right? No. No. So how, how did you learn? Well, you know, it's like uh, speaking the English language. You can speak English, uh, but you may not read it. Uh, again, getting back to hockey, Eddie Shack. Uh, some of us old guys remember Eddie Shack. Eddie Shack couldn't read. He can only basically sign his name on a piece of paper. So to play music, and I think uh, Rob Ebney and some of these music teachers in town or around the world would agree with me, um, you don't have to read music to play it. And the Beatles, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, you name it, not one of these great, great uh, performers or songwriters can write a note on paper of music. So when, when did you get your first job? How old were you? I was uh, 18 or 19 years old. I was in Toronto at a place called the Wheat Chief Tavern. And if people know Toronto, Ontario, that was the west end of Toronto at the corner of King and Bathurst Street. And a friend of mine um, basically knew a few chords on guitar. I knew a couple of chords on piano. Uh, and to make a long story short, he read an ad in the Toronto Star that this bar was looking for um, someone to perform on the weekends. So he uh, came up to me and said, Frank, why don't we go and audition for this? I said, look, I don't know what I'm doing and you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but I said, okay, let's go and just show them that we don't know what we're doing. So basically, we went down and had an audition. They had an old piano on the stage. This guy, uh, this partner of mine at the time, uh, played guitar. And uh, we did an audition for about 20 minutes. The owner was there, a couple of bartenders, and a few people that were drinking in the afternoon. Um, and we did not make uh, the cut until I played this one song that I knew on the piano. And it was this one. Mammy. Anyway, I did that song, and apparently it was the owner's mother's favorite song. We got the job. We got the job because of the old Al Jolson tune called Mammy. And every weekend, uh, we were actually hired for two weekends. We ended up staying two years and uh, built the following, and I built a band around that. Uh, the band was called Grandpa. It was a band back in the 70s and 80s. We played all over Canada, down in the United States. Um, and we had a couple of records out, and uh, we didn't make the big time, but most of the guys in the band uh, decided to get a real job, and I stayed, <laughs> I stayed with the uh, piano and yeah. uh, made so a little. So, you ever, have you ever had a real job? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, the yes part is that I actually, after I left uh, home at 16 or 17 years old, I worked. Uh, delivering fuel oil on Toronto Islands to the houses um, on, on, on the islands. It was uh, fuel oil for their uh, for furnaces and all that kind of stuff. And I did that for about a year, uh, but I didn't, I knew that truck driving wasn't my deal. I'd go up and down the Don Valley Parkway and um, I looked at all the traffic in those days. It was bad too, but it's not even close to what it was today. But I said, Frank, this is not for you. So eventually, like I say, at the Wee Chief Tavern, I got my start, and uh, we built from a two-piece to a four-piece to a five-piece band. We got a manager, and we uh, took off for the foothills. We just yeah. went all over northern Ontario, and uh, things kind of snowballed. You know, we're playing six nights a week, five sets a night uh, for many, many years. But again, the band did uh, split up eventually, and I went out on my own about 30 years ago. Yeah. Now, this is taking you all around the world. Tell me about that. Yes, it has. Uh, I was lucky enough to do a, 
a World Millennium Cruise back from 1999 to 2000. Uh, anyway, we left at the end of 1999, came back in 2000, but uh, we were in the uh, Antarctica, the, apparently the first ones to see the sunrise of the new mo mo millennium. <laughs> Say that five times, right? And um, so basically, I, I, I've done that. I've done a lot of cruise ships uh, out of uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, New Orleans um, over my career. And I don't do very many now because you have to sign on for three or four months. Although some of my friends that are on cruise ships right now, um, obviously the cruise ship industry is, 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 is not doing as well as it usually does, but hopefully that will change one day. Um, so I don't do a lot of cruise ships now. And I, uh, as a lot of people here know at St. Mary's, I play usually Friday nights uh, at a place called Gordy's here at, uh, in St. Mary's, uh, which is closed right now, yeah. which is very understandable. And, and we miss our friends. And I, I want to say hello to uh, some of our friends on Friday nights. And I know that uh, John and, and Don, too, uh, periodically come out. Well, John comes out a lot. So um, it's sort of led its way to, uh, to a full-time gig. And the reason why musicians call this a gig is because the word work, um, it's too much like, you know, we got to show up for work. No, we show up to a gig. But it is work but it's just another word for it. Yeah, well, again, we uh, did our live, <laughs> this past Friday, we did our first online concert, and, uh, you know, there were 12 of us doing it, but it was good to see everybody again. Okay, Frank, well, thanks for telling us about your life. Uh, it's still going strong, and uh, you oh, came by to the way, Mary's. By the way, I want to tell everybody out there that out of something bad always comes something good. So the coronavirus, coronavirus is bad, but Corona beer... It's good. <laughs>